morning, and then I wait for you to the second floor. So it was the third day of our Fake Library conference, and I'm happy that you came, even though we have this beautiful weather outside, and it's very early. So I'm very happy that you are here, um, and that I can introduce our first guest uh, this morning, Daniel Garcia Luca, who some of you might know very well because Hans and me are working with Daniel since many, many years and he's a sort of constant guest also here in Stuttgart as artist but also as curator, as um, somebody who does very interesting, uh, inspiring workshops. So we are collaborating also in very different worlds together. Um, his wide body of work is based on collaborative research practices dealing with the politics of technologies, the politics of the body, the politics of space, of knowledge and many more um, issues. Um, he work, his works comprise sort of um, artifacts, uh, photographies, installations, but also net art projects, interventions in public space, um, or a whole series uh, that was especially in the beginning of the 2000 years uh, of so-called e-projects that were local-based um, platforms for cultural political debates, which almost were the first structures which you could compare to WikiLeaks, actually. So that, that also is part of, of his work. Um, he would say that, that artists should not produce new images, but they should reinterpretate and reconfigurate and recontextualize the, all these tons of already existing images. And this, of course, causes that uh, he's one of those artists who are um, compiling huge archives of material. And one project where he was dealing with this sort of archives was the was Capital Archive, which uh, is um, very much also connected, of course, to the, the subject of our um, our conference. You have also access to this um, material of the archive in the exhibition, which deals with the period between 1989 and 2001. But I'm not going because probably you are saying something about this. Yeah. And then finally, his platform of working is since 1996, Technologies to the People. It's a fictitious company he founded, and which is a sort of Camouflage, maybe also platform of his work. So I'm to you with this. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for coming this uh, every Saturday fair free. Um, uh, I would like to introduce, like, uh, or to talk. Uh, it's not really a, a academic lecture. Uh, I would like to make more like a very short presentation, just to put on the table. I change a little bit my presentation, like always. But uh, I would like to introduce, like, uh, or to talk about two or three different projects that I am involved with. Uh, I work like an artist, so my, my main framework is to talking about art language or, or the relationship between the, the art practice. But also, I used to collaborate in different projects, so I will try to move from, from this project to the other. I, uh, I would like to I start with this kind of very, uh, this photo of this idea of the library, the bibliothek, or this idea of how to order books or other information. And the whole thing is uh, my, my uh, projects are dealing all the time how to deal with uh, this only information, data, documents, books, video, photo, whatever kind of document and how to transform in this document into a specific knowledge. I think it's, it's uh, something that, uh, that I would like to, to, to talk about the, the whole time. I don't know if you are familiar, maybe not, because it's not very well known in many places, this library for the, from the 15th century. This is uh, El Escorial, it's uh, near Madrid. It's the imperial building for Felipe II, when he built up outside the city, in the center of, of Spain, this kind of power center to controlling the world. And Felipe II, even Carlos, that we say, we say in Spain, Carlos I of Spain and the fifth of Germany, because at that time they, have all, they, they own all this territory that actually is Belgium, the 
Netherlands, um, some part of, of Germany, I kiss Grand, all this, all this part of, uh, of, the, of the country here in the center of uh, Europe. Felipe II was the one that said that the moving paper, moving data, he controlling the world. He never moved from there, from the center. And he was an incredible book collector. I don't know if you are familiar also with the story of uh, the Western culture in Europe, the Christianity occupied the territories of the south of uh, Europe, and one that the, uh, the Catholic kingdom in Spain in the 14th century, one of the first things that they made is to bar every library and every bibliotheque for the Muslim, basically. But they preserving some data and some books. They preserving everything about astronomy, medicine, all this technical, uh, uh, we can say, knowledge or, or books that they are. At that time, of course, the books is only is this one book, one copy of everything, or two copies or something. But for example, when the invasion of, of, of the Catholic, the military Catholic, get the control of the south of Spain, that we call for 600 years Al Andalus, they occupy Murcia, they occupy Cordoba, all this uh, free emirate or isolated uh, emirate or something. And for example, they destroyed Murcia, that it was one of the uh, first European uh, universities. They destroyed everything about poetry, novel, all this Nazari poetry that at that time is uh, the representation of modernity. After that, this was something that the, it was a, a kind of military technique erase the memory of the other, occupy the places, occupy the mezquita, build up the cathedral where the mezquita was there and destroy the universities. But they start to keep it, Carlos the first, start to keep it some document that they say medicine, military techniques, chemistry and astronomy basically. And all this book is coming because Felipe II become like a, an incredible collector. But did you Pay attention, when you enter in his private library, you can see very well here. Well, not very well because it's uh, so shiny. But the book are in this kind of position. You never saw the information about the book. So Felipe II is the only one that is controlling the information in the room. And this is, this is very, very interesting, the way of because most of the book, of that book, they are totally forbidden, even for the rest of the people. But the whole thing is about how he starts to control it and understand what is going on to control any information. And this, uh, the El Escorial, it was made to commemorate the San Quintin uh, battle in between Belgium and the Netherlands and, and Germany in this corner. Because at that time, of course, the printer technique are right to the center of Europe and they are crazy people in Amberes printing the holy book, interpreting a sacred book, start to printing out basically sacred uh, uh, the, the holy book or something and start to spread there. So uh, uh, the Spanish imperial authority decided to burn in the city. But this was very funny because then all this printer, all this uh, knowledge spread all over Europe. They start to uh, open new uh, printed uh, factories in, in Hanover, near Hamburg, uh, in, in the, so all over Europe, uh, Central Europe. So the information starts to be something more accessible, of course, controlled by the uh, Protestant at the time, or the Catholic. It's not something because most of the people have no idea about how to transfer a book into knowledge because they cannot read it, they cannot interpret the book. This is, was always uh, something uh, controlling by that. Then uh, the history also, uh, everybody knows the Corona, right to America, or something like that. Uh, so we are not only stealing gold and material. It's like a, every, every trip to America or to Philippines or to uh, China, to whatever other places, it's coming back with gold, everything that you can steal, of course, this is the history of, of colonialism. But also it's carrying a lot of information, botanic information, information about new uh, animals that you, you, you don't know before, new plants like a potato, tomato, or that thing that you eat now, basically. 
in German. <laughs> All this kind of information. So this is a, 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 normally in post capital. I try to say that this is a period. This historical gap is very similar to the internet period. This gap that we are living now. It's more information that we can really digest. And for them, uh, Carlos the first, and then after his son. Felipe II start to establish the modernity of the administration, start to make a new institution. One of the first institutions in this castle, this is the Archivo de Simanca. It was till the 19th century the biggest archive in the world, only compared with the Vatican archive. But the Vatican, we don't know what is inside, so we cannot make the calculation. But before the, the, the Congress uh, Library in the state, it was the biggest uh, uh, archive in the world. So they start to compile all this, this information and of course it's a military place in a totally, totally isolated place. They are not neighbors uh, around this, uh, this part of the thing. Um, two centuries later they also opened that we call it Archivo de Indias, the Indian archive that is in Sevilla. It's, a, it's a, like a four times bigger than this because it's the main part of the port. It was in Sevilla at that time, so they controlled all this information in the interior part of, of from, from the south coast of, of Spain. So they start to compile all this information and deal with this information, control the information because they, they are uh, really clever in this idea that uh, just moving paper, you can control the world and control the administration of the world. And this was, uh, for me, it's, uh, it's, it's very significant. I would like to talk about my background working with uh, archive and, and, and material because uh, uh, I make a, all this project, the per capital project, or, or, or many projects that is dealing about compiling information or dealing with information. Maybe one of the first is when I start to to work in the '97. Uh, dealing with all this technology to the people. I don't know if you are familiar with this project that they made. It's a totally fictional uh, company, corporation, that they create in the 95, something like that. Or oh, six, six, 96. And then it was the time that they start to be a member of the rational group and they start to work in this kind of net art project and more deep to be uh, accessible. So this was a fake collection, totally fake collection that is still working, but at, at that time uh, we presented in reason like a new technology that you can broker material. So we make a very good collection, typical collection. We, we were uh, working with a curator for a museum to, say, to see what will be the, the 100 best video art pieces and, and, and for, for a museum. And it's a totally fake uh, uh, collection. So it doesn't work at all. It starts to, to make a, it's a kind of joke that it starts to fail and asking for pruning and asking for something. But at that time, it was uh, uh, not technology uh, for, for, for this thing. Um, and also, uh, because even my actual, uh, I recently started to work in a gallery. I never. Never before I was working in a gallery, but now they have a lot of market pressing or something. So I decided to be integrated in a project that this gallery is also an editor. So he has an independent editorial, and this is a big successful in Spain actually. Um, this is that sometime we were talking yesterday that the, the role of uh, this is just to that to understand how is my relationship with book because also, also in my studio have, not have three parts of my studio, they are doing books also. So I am very familiar with the editorial, with editing books, something like that. But this is a kind of contradiction because I never even work very much with physical book or something. I, I, I used to, to work always with this digital archive. But this, uh, this was a, a discussion inside the group, uh, Pedro Ferromero and, and the artist that we are in the gallery because the gallery is working uh, in parallel with the, with the editorial and it's the same kind of work. The, the editorial is also like a curating 
people writing books or curating books uh, that they was uh, writing. And for example, they editing Joseph Hoover, I don't know if you are familiar, that is for uh, 17th, uh, 18th century. It's a classic, it's very interesting about art and literature. In, in France, it's the main, you want something, everybody working with books, he had this book because he never write a book. He only take note, but everybody, he was the advisor for, for, for Victor Hugo, for, for many people at that time. And then you republish this book, and then we, fortunately, we use the Spanish. So the Spanish is the, the second modern language in the world. So normally you sell 2,000 of these books that have no right. Maybe you get money back. So it's a kind of a very low, um, how you say, uh, capitalistic company, but they still to publish this classic, and of course they have a lot of uh, outdoors that uh, normally they are in this kind of underground, like a belly board colic, I don't know you know this, uh, the, uh, it's, it's very famous in Spain, in Latin America now, it's about the Bosnian, the history, recent history of uh, the Yugoslavian war, uh, he's coming from from Odrika, I think, and uh, he's a refugee in Paris, it's also in, in French, it's, it's, very, it's, it's uh, very famous. Okay, then I would like to move to, to the point that uh, libraries. <coughs> when I was also working in Sarajevo, I had this reflection about the library, because this is connecting with the Felipe II and the, the conquest of Granada or something. When somebody, we are still using this technique. This is that yesterday I make a comment about the public responsibility to keep our memory, the data of our history or something. If you erase the, the library of Sarajevo, of course there are no more memory on this side, not everything or something. If everybody have a copy of this, digital copy of this library, this, uh, this thing like this uh, never will happen again. Um, but this is, a, this is a kind of anachrony. Uh, I don't go into to tell the history about the whole thing because it's, it's very sad. Now it's just a building, it's not a library anymore, so there is no book anymore. This is why the day of the opening, the, the, the architect of this building commits suicide like a protest again. The thing, we make a, a building and it's nothing inside. This is not a library, now it's the city hall, it's the office of the city. But also, when you are working with some group doing projects, like uh, in Tinduf, in the, Sarah, in, in the Sahara, in the south of, uh, of uh, Argelia, in the south of, uh, of the desert, working with the people, they have nothing, but they have incredible good education, because they have a school, they have a kind of university, but they have nothing, because they are living in the desert. So even to have access to electricity is very heavy. And then we start, I start to talking or to thinking about this kind of totally isolate or the role of maintaining kind of library in totally isolated places. What kind of library you can make for people living in the desert with a political and military education and they used to speak Spanish and Arab um, and, and some dialect for, for, from the desert. What kind of book you can compile for kids for middle-aged people or something like that. And also my reflection was when I was uh, teaching or, or, or preparing workshop in the 2000s in, in Latin America, most, mainly in, in, in Argentina, during the Corralito, the people cannot travel anymore. And then the university has no new books, but this uh, because uh, they cannot buy it. This is uh, very expensive. I remember that in 2000, it's a right, this, Negri half imperium. So everybody that was in the same group, an uh, NGO to go there to teach it, was talking about Negri half. Uh, for example, in Buenos Aires, the people is very good in Foucault and uh, uh, study, psychoanalysis of Foucault, Freud, that kind of study, but uh, they are very good in Foucault and, uh, and so forth. But they have no idea at that time about uh, Negri half things or something about imperial and every intellectual from Europe was talking about this topic. 
And then the, the people, even the people teaching there, start to protest and say, yeah, but that book, it costs here $70. We cannot buy it because the salary for me, like a cathedratic of the university, is $250 a month. So this is a kind of luxury. Even now, still in, in, in Chile, for example, there, there are not many editorial in Chile. It's a kind of isolated country also. It's a kind of five star in the relationship with the rest of, uh, of Latin America. Books are very expensive because they need to import it. And every, everything that you import it is a luxury tax. So you pay extra uh, 21 percent or, or 19, I think it's now, extra money, even after the price to importing from Mexico, from Spain, or from whatever other country. So whatever book is quite, quite expensive if they cannot uh, edit it. Of course, it's the border of the language. But uh, when we were teaching in, in Seoul, in Korea, uh, like uh, most of the people have no idea about Arambe or Rancia because uh, five years ago it was only one book translated into, into Korean. And then I started to talking to make this kind of more precise book collection or how to deal with this kind of collection. But this is still like a reflection. I, I will skip now and come back to, to the post-capital project. And after that, I will make a, a mention about this little library because it's a project that I'm working on. Uh, just to talk a little bit about Post Capital. Post Capital now is, is a book, but it was a project that they start to compile material, just put it in a hard drive. For, I started in the 2000 there, when I was in, in Argentina, I started to compile books in the beginning. Because the people in the university was asking for this negri hard, and they, in the department, in the, I remember in the, uh, <coughs> in Bellas Artes, in the School of Art, that you have only one course, there are 600 students, and three, uh, 30 uh, uh, teacher assistant. So if you are teaching there, you need to explain. When I arrived the first time there, I believe that this was the school, like this. There are 30 people, and then I, I, I arrived there for the, for the breakfast, and I said, yeah, but these are your assistant. You need to explain what you are going to do, because the class is a little bit bigger. <laughs> 600 people there, so that you need to deal there. But then the, the first that they made it to us for the book. And then I arrived to the department, and it was nothing in the department. Nothing except some scan. Scan with the cover, and every book that they take it, they scan in everything and start to classify, make PDF, and start to distribute for the class. You distribute for the teacher, and then the teacher say, okay, I give you this USB, you can copy. And basically, it's this kind of distribution. Of thing. Even in, in Venezuela, that they start to copy a lot of books. It's the first group of people, very well organized, that I know, that they start to compile a, a really very big uh, library. So I start to copy all this in hard drive and to travel with this material to exchange with it in different places in Colombia, in, in, in Chile, or something. So I start. And after that, I start to compile more files till. We always say that it's not really like uh, 250,000 different files. And it was the post capital archive. And in the post capital archive, it was only three categories money, city, and citizen. I said, of the city, city, money, and so So there are no more categories. In this free folder, we organize the whole thing every book, every video, something like that. And the people can copy, and, and, and it was no soft, special software at that time. Because the first setting, uh, we tried to make it in 2004, but finally it was 2006 in Barcelona. And then I made Post Capital here in 2008. And then I start to make it in many places, in Beijing, in Istanbul, and something, till I think now 27 different places. So the archive is, is uh, it was at that time, it was a bit discussion. Uh, I take it everything from internet, but I never put it back in internet because it was forbidden. It was very complex to put near a terabyte of material again in internet, how to classify. And even we asked for, we have a server at that time or now in Irrational, but it was impossible because we have no capacity. And you cannot put in any other commercial server, only in, in one institution. And then I start to put the, the, uh, 
just the hard drive and make a, a setting with uh, What that you use in this kind of display that it was uh, it was a display here in Stuttgart, the Kunstverein. So we put this tower, it's like at the tower of power, this about hierarchy, whatever, blah 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 blah. And we put under the tower the server, and the server is serving to different terminal that it was in the CBC, in, in the different part of the CBC. Many of you, you know basically uh, mostly the people here in, in Stuttgart. So the people can copy, can print, it, can take it uh, in a very easy way. Just go with the USB and, and we have a label and you USB uh, assets on the table and, and you copy. And then also this idea of copy and this idea of using like an art tool, because we start to talking of course about legality, not about the book, but for example, in Barcelona, it was a big discussion with the lawyer of the city and the lawyer of the La Virreina at that time, Palace, because we have a lot of, that they say, sensible material. Uh, at that time, it was uh, the, the Iraq war, and we compiled all this video of Al-Qaeda killing people, that they are forbidden or something, and then I start to have a problem. I never have a problem about copyright. Every time that I am going to the court, actually, I still, in, in a new session for, it's always about secret revelation, like I, I am now uh, in this uh, thing, but it was always about something like that. Secret revelation, sensible material that you are solving, and something like that. But it was a very interesting discussion, because for me, the display, the archive itself, is a powerful tool to discuss with the institution about institutional rule. How the institution accepting accept that this can be complex and it's about how the, not the public, but the user of this <coughs> cultural process are dealing with this material. For example, La Virrena was very heavy discussing where to put all these Al-Qaeda people cutting the, the head to the people, where to put it. We must put a label like this or just put in the archive inside a folder, another folder, another folder, say, this is forbidden, of course, you cannot control the whole thing. But it, it was a discussion, and finally, everybody was fine, and nothing heavy happened till now. Mm -hmm. We are still in some topic, but this is another uh, situation. And I would like to go very, very fast. Just explain some reflection that we made after that. In 2009, I got an invitation for uh, to go to the Venice Biennale, the first Catalan pavilion, <laughs> and then we make a kind of... Uh, and then I start to talking about the interface. It was not um, Calibre or the kind of software, so we create a new software. We not had the working together with the people that was doing the, the searching machine in, into the Ubuntu uh, tool or something. And we call Sipcare. Sicari is coming from Latin, in Italian it's also Sicari. In Spanish we use it, buscar, looking for, looking for something that I specifically know. But in Italian, in Latin, also in Catalan, it's cercar. It's that you meet a group of different uh, things, book or whatever, and you choose something in between this. It's used, you know, cercar. This is something like I is using for in the farm, also for the animal. You never, you are not looking for the cow. You in the beginning you take a, a group of cows and then you are looking for the one that you are looking. You, you, you choose the one that you are looking. For. And for me it was very interesting because in the process of digitalization that we are living, I always say that we are not visiting the archive anymore or the library or the bibliothek. We are living inside the archive. So for me, the question was how we take decision when we have thousands and thousands of documents. From where to start? If, uh, if I am giving a lecture here, I am talking about Foucault or Walter Benjamin or something. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you are going immediately here to the library or to the bookstore, and then you buy a book. 
you have 20 euros, say, okay, I need to start here for Foucault, before, or Walter Benjamin. This is, uh, the, the complete world is, is very expensive, so I start for, for only the simple book that it cost 20 euros. But now when I say Rancière or Walter Benjamin, you immediately download from the internet everything about Rancière or, or Walter Benjamin, or even Chiche, they have incredible collection. Everything, every, every uh, uh, doctor's uh, file, every book, every translation in different languages. So you take everything. But the question, this is the difference between, uh, uh, I think, the question is still, uh, it's, it's very much about education, from where to start. Which book are you, for the, are you choosing for, for the or something? And then we start to modify totally the searching machine. So the, the server that they made at that time is to read every book, every file, to compile it. Before they transform it, we make a script. So you put a video, whatever, it's transforming in one format only. From doc to PDF or whatever, and from AVI to, to, to another kind of, of server. This is made it automatically. And then we open that the whole machine is uh, everybody that is using there can add metadata in different languages, in Italian and every so in every place that we put it, you start to tag in this document with different kind of, of classification. And then you start to uh, make connections. So automatically the machine starts to make connection with one document to the other or something. And it's very easy to find it. And we make more transformation. I think you have there are still the software there that you can study somebody is interested in this. Of course, it's free software and you can take it. And we also create another software that is called Post Capital Movie. The both one was made with uh, Angar. Angar is a producer center for art, independent artists in, in Barcelona. So they are people. We have a laboratory for software and for all this kind of thing, and do you know, blah, 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 it's called the work. And many people is coming from there. Um, Pedro from, uh, is coming from, from Shanghai and all these kind of people. But also we were working with a, a kind of, uh, uh, for the University of Salamanca, with a group of people that they are dealing with data, big, uh, big uh, amount of data, so like a million of data. Normally, they only make receive about cancer or, or this kind of molecular uh, data or something like that when they have million and million of data. And then I propose them to develop a new software to analyze all the data about the movie from uh, 1989 till 2001. And they create, they create this uh, software. German. Okay. That is the way to looking for information is totally a game uh, uh, situation. When the system see some information it can be a standard information, like uh, I have hundreds of reference about one document, the system say it's not interesting. So you look at the tag that they are very very little tag, or maybe we can make. It's very slow because it's taking the whole database and, and it's also a kind of Java very old technology. It's 2009. It's, it's not very old, but this is very, very slow. Let's see if it's working. Maybe it changed. Well, I explain because maybe it's coming, but uh, it's take a little bit. 
that they make in this overlapper is like a looking for relationship, very strange relationship. It's, a, it's everything is mathematically defined. So it's something that we try that the human is not taking any decision. They take it at that moment, the whole database for the Internet Movie Database, that now is from Amazon, but at that time it was uh, free of user. We ask for the right to download, to make this kind of research in the university. We take it the whole database, and then they start to create it automatic relationship with the category that already they are in the, in the database. But they are looking for not similarity, but something that is very strange for the system. When they are a low, low level of relationship between two data. Because normally, if uh, the system, uh, the, the logic of the system is like a if there is a lot of relationship in between uh, uh, a molecule or a cellular unit, maybe we know already that is going on. But uh, that we are looking for something totally unknown, something that we are not related, not the standard that we studied before, but something like that. You can download and, and try to 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 looking for uh, how it's dealing. It's, it's a kind of very strange, but sometimes. It's, it's very surprising because, for example, at that time, they take it by chance that Booth is um, the role of Booth is the devil. <laughs> so, so I don't know how they get this kind of relationship because it's related because some people in the movie or some script or something is talking about Booth like the devil. No, no one is talking about it, even about the pornography in, in many countries in Hungary or something. It's very funny what they take because the category can be people in this position, naked in, the, in this position, or only some with one breath or something like that. This is the kind of category that the, that the system is created uh, automatically. It got, it got the results. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah but maybe also to take it, because I need to take it, because if I take one of these categories, say this is, this is very much. So, uh, and look at this. All these are the relationships that they are doing, and then they start to work in like a, make like a connection and group uh, and different teams and something like that. And you start to, and this all this is connected with the database. So finally, you find the role, of the actor, if it's an actor or the screen, uh, fill in there more information, and you have a map where you can develop it. It's just something I, I don't want to uh, follow this. Okay, I would like to move to Cerezales, maybe. Oh. What time is it? How much time? Okay. 15, 15 so? Okay. okay. This was uh, the uh, capital animation that we made to explain into the post-capital uh, architecture what does it mean cartography, new cartography. You know also Felipe II uh, contract Mercato to make the new map. And for this is the reason that when you make a, a whatever map, you make like this. And here in the center of the cross is Spain, Portugal, France or something. And this is still like that. And you know that the Mercato, it was the first time they could before, with the artist, you to work for the Imperial, or for the Kingdom, or for the administration, doing this kind of map. But at that moment, uh, Felipe II, or many other uh, Kingdom or Imperial, they say that mathematics or physics are better because it's, it's this aura around that something that is more, uh, how you say, uh, is, uh, is continuing uh, the, the truth. Okay, this doesn't work. So, that you want to explain this, uh, I don't know where this is. Anyway. I put it too very fast. So of course in the in the nineties we get access to all these military tools that it was only before for universities, government or military tools, to start to uh, see the world from, from outside. It's the first time that the, everybody is the position in their life is where you are. For your body, you start to explain the rest of the world. 
because you are sitting here with your telephone and you say, okay, I'm here in the Kunstverein. This is the same for kids. And everybody gets a lot of information for the rest of us. Where are you living, where do you stay, the, your social position, you are living in one part, you have a car in front of your house or whatever. But that this navigation is doing is visiting 90, well, it's, it's like 140 places around the world that did the standard of the uh, human being. Most of the, I cannot say because in post capital we use not to say or, or call city or metropoly to any place because we don't know the definition for Mexico DF or, or the big Buenos Aires or Tokyo. What is now? It's a city, it's a metropoly. Even uh, urbanists or city planning people, they don't, they, they are not agree with the definition of what is Tokyo, what is uh, actually Seoul or Beijing. Or, or more specifically, Sao Paulo, or Delhi, or something. It's a place where the people used to travel, most of the connection around the world, 90% uh, of the connection. It's a, it's, a way where, it's a place where we are going. It's cheaper to go between uh, Barcelona, uh, Berlin, or, or, or New York, than from Barcelona to Bilbao. It's only 300 kilometers or 400 kilometers, but it costs like a 400 euros. It is, it is similar in every place. So it's not about connection, it's how we are doing a machinery that is connecting all these places. You can see very easy in Asia or in America that there's a big concentration in this kind of place. In the big Buenos Aires is living 90% of the population of an incredible big country. Very big, like a, it's similar to the European size and everybody is living in this La Plata River uh, area. Everybody between La Plata and the big Buenos Aires is living in like a, like a, I think it's 17 million of people. The same is in Mexico that every day the people is concentrated from rural areas to these places. But then that I would like to say this, the economy is moving in these places. The university, the knowledge, the military decision, the political decision, the economical decision. Also the people is moving easily in between these 100 or 150 places. But in between, there are also people, and there are also little centers that they are thinking, studying, living, loving, producing information. Um, also, uh, it's a big contradiction that it's a global world that is mostly connected not every, every place is connected. The Sahara is not connecting with the south of Spain. They have telephone, this satellite telephone, but they have no access to internet, they are normal access. So not everybody is connected, but it's a contradiction in, in, in a digital world that you can live in the middle of nowhere or in a fantastic landscape place. Uh, you cannot, for some reason, you cannot still living and working uh, there. And then we start, or I start to collaborate in this uh, process that is the uh, Ceresales Foundation. It's a very little foundation in the middle of nowhere, in the north of, of the, uh, uh, Spain, in Leon, in the middle of the mountain. When they start to create a, a foundation where they get money for, for a donator, if I can say, and they start to build up uh, a new project, working with the, uh, into the rural area. The, the place is only, the, the city have only 34 habitants during the year, and during the summer, maybe 100 habitants in total, uh, in, in total thing. Uh, and then uh, a donator arrived, some, some, somebody that uh, sponsored the, the project, because he was uh, living uh, in this uh, little place in the 30s, he born there and then Nietzsche emigrated uh, to Mexico after the, the Civil War. And he started working in, in, in the Coronita <coughs> brand. This beer brand is very famous in Mexico, also now here. And he started to uh, work in there. Um, 60 years later, become the president of, of the company, of the, of the Modelo company, one of the biggest we have run around the world. Actually, it's a partnership with a Belgian uh, company. So he donates some money to the foundation, to this foundation, to start 
uh, de, de Fundación Cerezales, Antonino Anasini, eh? and the whole aim of the foundation is about education. Education through artists or art. I don't know why, because this is quite crazy. He's not involved, he's 97 years old, he's not involved in the foundation, but there are many young people involved in the foundation. So the whole thing is to prepare during, during the year workshop for kids during the summer, because in the, during the summer there are many people coming there for vacancy or from the surrounding of the area. And the whole thing is uh, like a, normally they, they used to, to work with uh, 3D printing or this kind of thing, uh, robotic, uh, Arduino, uh, whatever. And now they are, actually there are people with 14 years old that they, they are experts. And the <laughs> pedagogical process is very similar. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with the pe uh, libertarian pedagogy for the 30s. Ferrer Guardia, uh, uh, Tolstoy, um, and Ricardo Mayo. All this libertarian thing. In the other hand, the root is born there also. It's not connected with the project, but in some way they are a kind of libertarian background, not connected at all, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's something like that. Um, yeah, in this context, uh, I try to go very, very fast. Uh, in this context, we start to, to open like a new project that is called the Rural Library for them. Uh, and I, we start, we make a group of people and we start to decide what kind of library can be for a rural area. Of course, we ask everybody living in the village and everybody involved in the project what kind of document they can compile. Uh, and then we start to working with this funding. Okay. Cool. But they are because they are involved in many projects about archive culture. So they, they used to organize the, the whole institution, like an institution is very well organized from the very beginning. So even the administration, they start to thinking before to have anything, how will be, for example, tacking or what kind of category they organize, everything that is involved in the, in the institution. Because the institution own nothing. They, this is the rule. They cannot buy the land, they cannot buy anything material is uh, there. So they renovate in the beginning that they made it to renovate the school where this guy was studying. And the school is the property of the city. Still, everything is still the property of the city. And they use this school that they are not students because it's only 34 inhabitants and they are only two kids. So they are not using this school, but they're using this school like an office or to make the workshop in the beginning. So they start organize everything from the very beginning. And it's very interesting how they organize everything. They need to buy a donkey, they need to buy the cow living there, they need to uh, pay the people taking care of the land also. So the whole thing is how to involve it. The whole. They have like an archive of seed for the whole region. So everything that the people is proposing, they are doing an archive. But this is very similar when they are categorize everything, and they say governanza, autonomous government, and they say we are the member of the government, we are international people coming, professional, amateur uh, people from doing. But it's funny when they say uh, language, about language, phonation, they say comunicación fisiológica, how the people were uh, talking like a something, human, no human, because they have animal involved. So everything that needs to administrate it is classified some way, and uh, I mean, in a very interesting uh, way, if I can say, because they have, and every of these things is totally transparent and, and accessible. Now they are building like a new place. This huge building in the middle of the forest is totally uh, into the landscape totally, uh, I don't know, integrated. It had the, the best energy classification in the whole over Europe. They were working four years about the geological, the energy in the land, how to get in something. The whole administration, energy administration, only cost, I think, 1,000 euros to maintain the whole thing, the heater. This is like a 20 uh, degrees under during the the winter, so it's quite cold during the winter. So 
So, but the whole thing is doing like a community. This is the main street in the, in the city or something like that. Anyway, uh, split with the last uh, project because it's, it's was only an example of this kind of different project. Yeah, two minutes. Okay. And then it's, it's, a, it's another project that split to a totally different thing. Now I am preparing a kind of big project for the uh, Spanish National Museum, the Reina Sofia in Madrid. It's a solo project and a very little part of, of, of a project. I still working with the continuum, uh, the same kind of, uh, with the same kind of developer, the same kind of group of people that I was working. Also this little foundation is involved because we have decided and we make into a big project this kind of uh, interface. This is this is only a demo. This is how how it's working. So we create two libraries with uh, 100 books in English and 100 books in, in Spanish. And how this is how it's dealing. With it. Here is coming the um, here is coming the title for news from the from the Google News or whatever or the RSS uh, news provider. And we are taking the news in real time for every day. And that the system is doing is make a mathematical searching into the library that we created before. Where I choose some book, like a hundred books from Agamben till Chichet. It's a, uh, well, there are many authors. It's not, uh, how I say, it's not single Bauma, but it's uh, Didi Uberman. Uh, it's not Badi, but you, but this runs here. It's not Heidegger, but this Anna Harren. So we choose 100 books in English and 100 books in, in Spanish, and that the system is doing it to answer the news in some way. So it's looking into uh, Walter Benjamin for a paraphrase that is connected with the news. Now the news in Spain is every time about corruption. This is corruption about something like that, but this. The, huh? <laughs> no, Hannah Claren is coming uh, automatically. So the system is looking in the library and it's looking for some sentence that in some point connecting with the, the news is saying at that moment. Um, yeah, and you can see this is in red now because this is the demo. It will be knowing the last thing. You can see the Hannah Claren sobre about the violence, how they choose a paraphrase connecting with this, and this is the metadata that they are creating, like, uh, I don't know, they have control, blah, 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 they make it automatically and mathematically, the definition of the whole thing, and then they take it. And I think that's all. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, it was a quite dense parkour, <laughs> so I can imagine that there are some questions. Maybe not, it's very early. <laughs> well, I mean, what, um, starting with the last project, so, um, so you've made a selection of 100 books because you said not, um, I mean, you had the, the ones you were selecting out and the one you were selecting in, which was, which kind of process was that? Who decided this and why did you make this sort of selection? Well, basically it's a editor uh, decision, a curatorial decision. I made it myself, of course, with the people that I am working on and we decided what is connecting with this thing. But also to me, it's something that you have, when you are going to your uh, sorry. When you are going to your library, this is actually my library. It's, it's also I have not the copy in the Calibre, but the, it's the copy that I have when I am traveling to work. In. <laughs> when you are going to your library, you have all this thing, and then you take the decision why Siku Bauman is not there because I don't believe that he say about the internet or the, about the liquid uh, ideas or something like that. So it's a practical decision and it's a personal decision. I choose the people that I think now can give answer to our reality and our presence uh, actually. So it's a, it's a totally uh, personal decision. I mean, it's not a, but it's into the process also how the people. Even I make a lot of joke about the top 10 of all this kind of thing. I made the video top 10, all this kind. 
a YouTube work in this kind of topic, a standardization or something like that. But can be uh, hundred, but can be a thousand also. It's about the capacity of the server and the system, how it's working, but it's not uh, about it. Even it's, it's, it's quite complex on the, and also I don't like it when it's looking into the whole archive, because even this archive is my personal archive. It's something that when you are studying something, uh, and they say, okay, we we'll let you have this book, and then you take it and you start to order there inside the archive, because something is related with the, with the other uh, uh, point of view. But it's just to, to follow up, but it's also like creating a sort of fictional or, or automatic dialogue. And I remember that you made this project where you, in, this was about interviews, I guess, about public space, and you, um, you tagged all these interviews, and then you can somehow re redevelop this conversation. Almost. Yeah. But it's a little bit going in this direction. Yeah. Well, this is a project that it was a commission, but it was time, time ago. It was uh, in the beginning of the WordPress thing. Because the people, the, it's the FAT Foundation, it's a very old foundation in Barcelona, 150 years or something. And it's about design, architecture, this Beauvoir uh, generation, that they, they create this kind of casino, Kunstverein, about design, architecture, and all this kind of libertarian uh, activity. And then they, they asked me to, to be the leader of uh, in the opinion of the city about city planning, about any topic that is in the present. So my question it was not to make, not organize like a panel or lecture or round table, but to record people uh, in a very simple way. We, we trained some people that was at that time studying philosophy, so uh, philosophy, uh, uh, alum from the university, very young people, and then we train in how to make interview or what what will be interesting for the project. And then we arrive, because for example, you arrive to the mayor or the president of the regional government here, maybe you can make an interview about one topic, but you cannot make an interview every week or every, uh, every month. So you make the interview, and in this interview you try to talk in about several topics, the topic that, that is the actuality there, but also something else. And these people, these philosophers that made, after it to edit in this uh, file, this sound file, and categorize, put tags in the different part of, of, the, of the thing. And then we put all together in a big archive. If you are talking about Stuttgart 21, even that this is not the topic that you are asking, but by the moment, uh, you can imagine that the mayor say, yeah, because this is similar to Stuttgart uh, 21. And then you categorize, you put the tag inside the file, and then you put everything in the server. When later you are looking for 21, Stuttgart 21, you push in the bottom of Stuttgart 21, and all these files is coming together and make a kind of collation. And we call this round table, because you get the opinion in different actors about one simple topic. And this we created time, time ago, and, and after it was the basic for the MAPA, radio, this kind of media radio in different museums in Barcelona. But we create this like a model, but this was like a, uh, I don't know, a joke for, for to be. <coughs> Discuss why it came yesterday a little bit also, and then we didn't go deeper. But it's the difference between information and knowledge. Yeah. And uh, simply accumulation of data is information, and then uh, a setup of different information to which other could lead into a cloud of information. But then again, it's not uh, knowledge. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, now it's it's also because on the one side I see that that is, I would say there is clearly a context in which mm -hmm. you create a certain kind of a tool which then automatically wise um, do something. But mm -hmm. the main important thing for me is still not the programmation. It's much more the setup and the framing. Yeah. Because I know the swarm softwares at one example were analyzing social spaces. And it's now very fashionable in, in architecture. And the criteria say they implement, takes a decision who is visible in it and who not. Yeah. 
I think for me it's, it's basic. I, I don't know you know this. Uh, I don't know you are familiar with this uh, uh, Didi Uberman uh, paradox, the butterfly paradox. You know the thing. Like uh, it's about well, Didi Uberman is a philosopher. He's talking about the pathos, where is the emotion in between the object and you and the distance, something like that. But the paradox of, uh, of the butterfly is like a, the butterfly is flying. But you want to watch the beauty. You want to really read how is the, is the butterfly. You need to kill the butterfly and put it on, on some plate. And then you see all this color, all this beauty or something. But the butterfly flying in terms of information and knowledge is very important also. This, this under the D.D. Uberman say, the pathos, where the pathos is produced. Uh, uh, this, is, this is very, very, very important for, for this thing. And this is what happened now. When I say that we are living inside the archive, this is the reality we have here. Look at all these books that we have in different projects. We have thousand documents that you say, this is not, in principle, it's not even an archive. And of course, it's not knowledge. It's something that is deposited, it's just data. And the way how to transform it. This is why in, uh, education, not the regular education. Maybe we we have not the education for our age till now yet. So we are looking for this because they say the process of information in the industrial age is totally different than in the informational age. We want information for all our life. This is not why our data are totally ice. Uh, how you say it, that you need to uh, update your information and your knowledge or something. It's not about uh, that. It's about to adapt into a new landscape that is totally polluted. All this information that they make is more pollution, more confusion. And then we need to take decision from where to start. And this for me is the process of the education, the new education, of the education that we need to live uh, in the contemporary uh, a time that we are living, it's very important, it's the main thing. I don't understand of this European government that they are talking cutting education programs or, or cutting all this about uh, how to produce information because now we have not this machinery that gives us answer. How to transform into this paper that has a lot of books there, all these kind of books, how to transform in this in, in, in some specific knowledge for our life like an artist, like a director of the, of the art institution, like a, whatever that you are doing, you need to transform it. Deal. So for this, uh, this is this idea that it was also in the Sarkare, how to take in control of some data and try or create a machinery to transform this data into knowledge, specific knowledge. And for me, this is a question. We, like an artist, we, we make questions. We are not here to give answers. But uh, we question like this, the, that system because this is why I put this archive. Sometimes it's just data that you can also compile or copy there. But this is nothing. The post capital archive, all this archive about who, itself, technically, is nothing. It's, it's, they have not really uh, pathos. There is no emotion there. There is nothing to transform it and into, into something more sophisticated. Okay. okay, I would say in terms of time we should um, switch to the next program, but thanks again. Okay.